What is up guys, Sean here with Rendered Reality. Today was a crazy day for the VR community. We had F8 going on and Valve basically came in and dropped a bomb on F8. Valve was supposed to release the index information on May 1st. That was what we were hearing, that was what we were anticipating. And basically about five minutes before F8 started and Zuckerberg went up there and got on stage, uh, Valve released all of the pricing, the specs and everything on Valve Index. It all went live on the Steam webpage. So basically, Everybody was going crazy about this information, talking about this, and a lot of people didn't even realize that F8 had started. They were still talking about all of this over the excitement and the specs, the pricing, and all of that. So we're going to get into this a little bit today of what we have so far. So basically, as you can see in the trailer in the background here, this is just some uh, a little video playing of the Valve Index, showing you the headset, showing you the controllers that they're calling the Index controllers or the Knuckles controllers, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so basically... What we're looking at here is two LCD panels in this. So we are going to have a uh, IPD adjustment. You can see on the video there where they're sliding the slider at the bottom. So basically we're going to have two 1440 by 1600 RGB LCDs. So it's basically the same resolution as like the Vive Pro, same resolution. And we're, they're, they're using a very low persistence LCD. So with this LCD, they're saying that they're going to have a uh, refresh rate that runs at 120 hertz. So that's much more than what we're getting with the, the Rift S that's gonna be running at 80 hertz. You got uh, CV1 and the regular Vive, you got those running at 90 hertz. So 90 hertz is usually that mark that they always said you wanted to kind of hit. Well now we're looking at 120 hertz with this and they're also gonna have an experimental mode that is gonna be able to do 144 hertz, which is unheard of in the VR community right now. I mean, that's just crazy. So. Basically, that's going to be an exper experimental mode, and uh, if you watch the video on Tested that they just put out of this hands-on, they were saying with the 120 hertz, that basically allows for no smearing at all. Like when you're looking side to side with the super low persistence and high refresh rate, you're going to have no smear. And so it is also going to be backwards compatible with 90 hertz. So it's still going to be able to do the 90 hertz. I think they also listed an 80 hertz mode that it's going to have. So basically what they're probably trying to do with this is for some of the lower end PCs. I'm sure they're still trying to keep some minimum spec in there so that, you know, you don't have to have the beefiest of PCs to be able to run this thing. I'm sure you're going to have to have a pretty beefy PC to do the 120 hertz and especially the 144 hertz. So as far as the spec goes, they're listing the... The minimum spec as a NVIDIA GTX 970 or an AMD RX 480 and a recommended spec of a GTX 1070 or better. They also talked about the field of view on this and basically what they're saying is you're looking at a 20 degree field of view increase over the Vive. And we know the Vive is right about 110. So you're looking at about 130 degree field of view in this, which is going to be a pretty decent improvement from what we're used to in the 110. It's not quite Pimax territory. I mean, Pimax is still the leader in field of view, that's for sure. We're not getting to that that kind of field of view, but 130 is still going to seem like a lot to us that are used to the 110. So that that's going to be a welcome improvement. Everybody's going to love that. So what else? So they also talked about they also talked about the optics. It's actually, I think, a five degree canted optics. So that, that's basically going to help them with the field of view. And there's also a uh, kind of like the Rift S, how you're going to be able to move the actual headset in and out from your face about one centimeter, they're saying. So that is going to be able to get those uh, screens as close to your face as you can. And that's going to help with the field of view as well. So another thing that's kind of interesting about this is the headphones. So if you can see the, the video here a little bit, and I have some other pictures to show you. The uh, headphones are over ear headphones, but they don't actually sit on your ear. So basically these, head, these headphones sit away from your ear to give you, you know, an over ear headphone experience, but I think it's gonna increase the immersion a little bit because you don't feel anything on your ear. So basically you're gonna hear the sound and the sound is right over your ears, but there's nothing touching your ears. So this is a little bit different. Uh, we haven't seen this audio design in a headset yet that, you know, out there. So we haven't got to experience this yet. They talk about it a lot in the tested video and they really seem to like it. They said that it works really good. It sounds really good. So, you know, I'm really excited to try that out. So, and it also talks about, uh, long session comfort. So if you're having really long VR sessions, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable with that 
style over the ear headphone that's not putting any pressure on your ears. You know, you don't have earbuds in your ears because I know not for everybody, but for me, that can get pretty uncomfortable after a while when you have an earbud in your ear. I kind of have like a small ear canal, so I don't really like wearing earbuds that much. So this should be really awesome, I think. So they talked about uh, the face pad. So the facial interface basically on this is going to be interchangeable. You're going to be able to change them out for other ones for aftermarket. They're going to have more available through Valve. And this is actually held in with magnets. So the magnets is what you pop it out, and the magnets are what hold the facial interface in, which is a little bit different than what we're used to seeing too, which is really cool. Also, let's see here, the uh, cameras on the front. So there are stereo cameras on the front that you're going to be able to do pass through with. And those are 960 by 960 RGB cameras. So I believe the Rift S is going to be a black and white camera. So I believe this is going to be a color camera. So you're going to be able to do pass through and color on this instead of black and white like with the Rift S. So as far as I know, the Rift S is only black and white pass through, which is a pretty big bummer. So that'll be a definite, a definite improvement in that. This uh, is going to ship with the... 2.0 base stations you can get it a package with the 2.0 base stations and we're going to get into pricing here in a minute they did release all that so they also are saying that this is going to be compatible with 1.0 base stations so if you already have a vive and you already have the 1.0 base stations this the tracking system should still work with this which a lot of people were worried about that and at first a lot of people were thinking that it wasn't going to be compatible but supposedly it will be there is also that face plate that snaps off the front and there is a port basically an expansion port that they're going to you're going to be able to do some other stuff with they haven't really announced what all they're going to be doing with that I'm sure I mean the size of it looks like about the size of a leap motion so I'm pretty sure they're going to have a hand tracking module that's going to work with this and who knows what else I mean who knows what else is in works but it's good to leave that possibility open it's nice to be able to add things down the future as technology progresses so it'll be interesting to see what we get that will work with this. It'll be really cool. Okay, so this is basically the pricing breakdown. This is a screenshot I took. I, I took a lot of screenshots when this stuff first popped up because we know how Valve has been with uh, their leaks. Like something will pop up on the website that you get to see for just a little bit and then it gets pulled back down. So I didn't know if this was gonna last. So a lot of the stuff I went ahead and got screenshots for. And I don't think they're gonna pull it back down now because it seems like the uh, embargo has been lifted. Uh, we, we just recently got the... Uh, the video from Tested that was a full hands-on thing that, so, you know, they, they're talking about it, showing it and everything else. So I don't think, you know, at this point, anything is super secretive anymore. I think they're go, going to go ahead and let all the information stay out there. But basically, you're looking at getting the Valve Index headset only for $499. These are all U.S. prices. Uh, the Valve Index base station, which these are the Valve 2.0 base stations. These are gonna, These are going to be the ones that you saw some of the pictures and the leaks from from I think last week. So these are those are those base stations, 2.0 base stations for $149. You can get the full Valve Index VR kit. That's gonna come with the headset, the base stations, and the Valve Index controllers and the Knuckles controllers, whatever you wanna call them. That is gonna be $999. So basically, you're looking at $1,000 for the full package. Um, the Valve Index headset and controllers are $749. So if you don't need the base stations, you can get the controllers and the headset for $749. So I'm not going to lie, this is a very tempting uh, piece of hardware here. And we're definitely very interested in this, especially with the little bit of in increase in field of view. You got the, uh, the really high uh, refresh rate of the screens. That's something that is very interesting. I, I mean, the 144 hertz, I don't even know what that would look like in VR. I, I can imagine that's pretty awesome. But Hopefully our PC will be able to do that. We're both running 2080s, so um, hopefully that 2080 will be able to do that 144 hertz. I'm guessing probably at least the 120, hopefully, but I'm not sure. Okay, so let's get into some of the pictures here. So this is a picture of the panel. So this is a picture of, that, of the actual two LCD panels that are, uh, what I say, 1600 by 1440 or 1440 by 1600 LCD panels that are going to be running 120 to 144 hertz and with a native compa uh, backwards compatibility of 90 hertz. So that's pretty exciting. The panels look pretty awesome. That's a picture of the panels here. Uh, this is a side shot of the headset. So the headset is going to have the strap in the back. You can see the knob on the back, and that's actually going to pull. That's how you're going to tighten the headset down on your head. So kind of like 
uh, kind of like PSVR works, uh, or the Val, I mean the uh, Rift S, it's going to be the same kind of a thing. And then the knob on the side of the headset there, that is actually what is going to move the headset in and out from your face. So we also have a picture. Okay, here's a picture of the headphones. So basically what we were talking about, how these headphones aren't actually going to touch your ear. So you can see this is how it works. Basically it just hovers over your ear and projects the sound into your ear. So this is something different we haven't seen. I'm really excited to try this out. And I do think it'll add to the immersion some of not having an actual headphone touching your ear. And even though the, the Rift CV1 has the over-the-ear headphones and they're very comfortable, I love those headphones, they do sit on your ear and they don't put much pressure on your ear at all. But after really long play sessions, I mean, you can feel they're there. You know, your ears can be a little bit sore because it does put just a little bit of pressure on it, but it's not much. Okay, so this is basically the browser page for the headset right now. This is what comes up when you go and you look. So if you go to the website, you're gonna get all kinds of specs, everything you wanna see. And we can put the link in the video description as well. So we'll have that link down there. Uh, the controllers are, I mean, everybody's excited about these controllers. If you watch them Boneworks uh, videos, you know, it, it really shows off the potential for this controller in virtual reality where you can really just open your hand, you can let it go, and the controller doesn't go anywhere, it stays on your hand. You are going to have uh, touch pads and thumbsticks, which I'm a big fan of the thumbsticks, so I'm very glad they added those in there. So we already know a lot about the controllers. These have been out for quite a while. Everybody's kind of seen these. Uh, these are the 2.0 base stations. These were leaked, I think, last week, so we have seen those. So there's the complete package there. And let me see this. Okay, this is the one I want here. So this is going to be the one that's going to show you a lot more uh, specs about it. And we'll put this in the video description. But basically, this tells you everything you want to know. So they, they uh, the guys at Tested that did the video said the screen door is greatly reduced in this headset. You know, you don't get a lot of screen door effect with these LCD panels, which we do know LCD panels are usually better for screen door effect because of the pixel layout compared to the OLED panels. So we see a lot of people going to these LCD panels, and I think uh, I think it's going to be a really good choice because of being able to get such low persistence out of these. I think that's going to be key, you know, to keep the smearing down and the screen door effect down. So a lot of the complaints of the OLED panels, we know we won't have with this, but you don't have the the OLED, you know, you get the the real dark blacks and stuff. So we'll have to see how that is, but it is pretty exciting. So there you can see the lenses. So this talks here, you can see where it talks about the canted optics. Uh, instead of a mount perpendicular to the user's eyes, the headset displays cant outwards by five degrees. This improves outer field of view while balancing the inner field of view. So definitely looking forward to trying this out. There's another uh, picture of the earphones. The twist knob in the back to adjust it. You got the quick swap pads. So I don't think this says where they're actually magnetic. If you watch the tested videos, it does talk about how they're magnetic and that's how they uh, stay on and come off. And I believe, so the IPD, where was that? Okay, so here's the uh, specs for the IPD. So the physical IPD is 58 millimeters to 70 millimeter range and that is a physical IPD adjustment. So they have uh, taken a lot of shots at Oculus lately with the, uh, when the, the leak came out, of the bottom of the Valve headset when the Rift S was announced, and I'm sure this was on purpose. They, the Valve showed the picture of the bottom of the headset with the physical IPD slider because a lot of people were mad that on Rift S they didn't include a physical IPD adjustment, which, you know, is frustrating. I have a pretty narrow field of view, so I would love to have the the field of view adjustment, a physical IPD, not just a software IPD. So that they've taken a lot of shots at Oculus. It's been coming left and right. I mean, the fact that they announced all of this stuff on right before f8 started was just i mean I, I mean valve is definitely trying to go head to head with oculus and they are doing a pretty good job of it because this headset is really a contender i mean this is a pretty exciting piece of hardware that's about ready to come out here pretty soon so that's basically all we have for today was uh this information here basically today was the first day of f8 and valve came in and dropped a bomb on the whole thing so we, we were pretty disappointed with the fact that 
the Quest did not release today, and the Rift S did not release today. They are going on pre-order with a ship date of May 21st. So that was a big disappointment. We were really looking forward to getting some hands-on with those headsets this week. We're going to unfortunately have to wait a little bit longer. And this really... All this Valve news is really enticing to forget about the Rift S and just go for the, the Valve Index. And originally we had planned on getting the Quest and the Rift S and possibly the Index. And at this point in time, I don't know, we already have the CV1, so I don't know if there's really any point to get a Rift S. I think we might, or at least for me, I might just go ahead and go after the Index and the Quest. So unfortunately we can't get any of this stuff yet. The release date for the Valve Index is going to be pre-order start tomorrow, which is May 1st. And the actual ship date on the website right now is showing June 28th. So hopefully June 28th is the ship date for this headset. Uh, we also are possibly going to have some news on Pimax tomorrow. So there's supposed to be something big releasing from Pimax tomorrow. That was on uh, MRTV and Sweet Viver. We're talking about that today. And they're pretty close with Pimax. So I would assume that we're going to hear something tomorrow from them. We are also going to do our Coffee and VR this weekend. If you guys haven't taken part in that, that is a live stream show that we do that we just talk about what's going on in VR. We talk about games, headsets, everything. We get involved you know, with chat and we talk with them. So that is a plan for this Saturday. We usually try to do it every weekend. We shoot for Saturday morning. Sometimes it's not until on Sunday. But uh, if you haven't been a part of that, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. That way you can uh, join in with us and just stay up to date with what we have going on. And once we get our hands on with these headsets... We are going to have some videos coming out of uh, all of that. We do some gameplay videos and uh, all kinds of stuff. So some of it is smaller developers that send us games that they want us to check out. We put some video up of that. So just make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit a like on this button if you can. And uh, we'll see you next time, guys. See you.